Hi and welcome to video demonstration number 4 on Perl, where we're going to work with loops. Uh, me, the guy who's talking, is Joachim Sjöverstad from the University of Skövde. Uh, so I prepared a short script with four different types of loops, uh, while, do while, for each, and for. And we're briefly going to go through the code for those and how they work. Uh, so what a loop is uh, in programming is, as you know, basically a program structure where you want to uh, that you can use when you want to repeat a code uh, a predetermined number of times or as long as something is true. So, for instance, you may have uh, a check somewhere in your code. You want to check if the user does something correct or if a number is a predetermined value or something like that, and then you can execute code. Uh, as long as that is, is true or until something gets false. Uh, so the easiest way to implement this is that you have a variable containing uh, some kind of number and then you do a loop and you say that as long as this number is something or as long as this number is over or under something you're going to execute a code. Uh, and then of course you have to do something within the code so that the control variable or the, the, the variable holding this number has to change at some time, otherwise there will be an infinite loop and that's going to uh, break your program. Uh, so if we start with looking at the while loop, it's quite simple. Uh, the syntax for it is just while and then what we call a condition and then the code. So what this actu actually say is that while the condition here is true, so in this case as long as the variable $while is 1, then this code is going to be executed. And what it, it does is that it prints uh, the string some code and then it increments the variable uh, dollar while by one. So dollar while plus plus, that means that we're going to take whatever is in dollar while and we're going to add one. So looking at the top of my little program here, I've declared a variable called while and I've declared it and assigned the number one to it. So from the beginning, uh, while should be equal to one this, thus this condition should be true and this co code should be executed. And since I am incrementing the variable, um, it's going to be 2 and then this condition will not be true anymore so this code should only run once. And I guess we'll go right ahead and try to run it. Uh, so Perl loops underscore vars dot pl and we go and you can see that it outputs some code and does it once. Uh, if I were to set it to 2 from the beginning, then the then the variable or this condition would be false from the beginning. So now it shouldn't execute some code at all, uh, and it doesn't. So that's basically how the while loops works. It says, while this condition is true, execute this code. Um, and if you want to, I can just show you what happens if, if I remove this and reset my variable to 1 from the beginning. Now, what's going to happen is that we're go we have the variable while, that is 1, and we have our loop while, uh, while dollar while is 1, do some code, and now since we're not doing any changes to our control variable dollar, dollar while, this code should run forever. So, let's try it. And you see that it just executes and executes and executes until I hit control C and it's gone. Um, and there are of course a load, loads of other tests that you can do, so if we get our control variable back I can say as long as dollar while is uh, bigger than one then we're going to run, or as long as, yeah, as, long as it's bigger than one um, and th that's going to be bad. Let's say as long as it's smaller than five it's going to run and what should happen now is that the first time it goes uh, the dollar while variable starts starts at one so the first time that we get to this condition check we're going to see that while dollar while is under five uh, what is it it's one so yes it will be under five we're going to execute the code we're incrementing the variable by, by one by one so it's going to be two then we do everything again it's going to still be true because the dollar while variable is two and so on and so forth until the, the dollar while variable reaches five. So if I'm counting things correctly, we should now print some code four times, right? Uh, and that's what we do. So that's, uh, in essence, the while loop. Uh, I'm going to comment that away, uh, and I'm going to show you a similar loop, which is called do while. Uh, so for this, I have 
uh, a do while variable here that's, that is set to zero. And how this variable works is uh, that it says do and then while. And it's and it does the code that is written directly after do once. It always does it once because the condition check is at the end. So it's going to see, okay, it's do, so we have a do while variable. But what's the code? Okay, we're going to print do while and increment the do while do while variable and then we're going to do a condition check and if the condition is true then we're going to run the code again. Uh, the big difference here is that the do while loop uh, is always ex executed at least once. Uh, so let's just show you this by setting the do while variable here to something that is very false uh, and you see that it should run again if the do while variable is one. So and uh, now we're going to run run this and you see that I forgot to save and you see that even if the control variable do while is far from one it still runs the code once uh, however if I set the do while variable to zero you can see here that what's going to happen is that it's going to execute the code uh, and it's going to increment the do while variable and the do while variable is going to be one which is our condition so when it comes to the condition check at the end it's going to evaluate this to true so now it should run twice and you see that it does uh, so that's the do while variable at a glance commenting that out and I know that I've already shown you the for each loop but I'm going to show it to you Again, the for each loop is basically a loop that has uh, some finite data set as an input. Um, so in this case you can do a for each loop and give it an array as input. And you see here that I've declared an array with three different elements in it. And what the for each loop will do is basically that it's going to uh, go over each uh, each and every element in the array, or it's going to loop the num as many times as there are elements in the array. It's very useful when you have an array or a data set where you want to do something for to each and every element in that data set. So in this time in this instance I start by initializing a counter uh, which is basically just an integer variable. I, I'm setting it to one, naming, naming it count, and then I do for each uh, array, which means that it, the for each loop will loop over each element in the array, which is three times. And then we're going to print count and then increment count. And uh, so you see that if I say count plus plus, then I'm going to increment the count variable with one. So in this instance, it should first print one, then two, then three, and then exit. So let's save and see that it does. Yep. So that's basically the for each loop. What is quite nice about the for each loop that I can also show you is that um, when there is a built in variable, uh, default variable, which is dollar underscore, and the dollar underscore will hold what you're sort of currently working on. So for the first iteration in the for each loop, dollar underscore will in this case hold index zero. In the second, iteration it will hold index 1 and in the third it will hold index 2 uh, and I'm just going to sh add dollar underscore to the print statement here just to show you that it's true and you can see now that it prints index 0, index 1, index 2 <laughs> so that's the for each loop and I finally want to show you um, the for loop uh, the for loop is another loop that it's a little bit special and you can see here that the condition uh, within the parenthesis here is much longer uh, and that is because the for loop is made up from uh, or the statement in the for loop is made up from three aspects first you define a control variable that's what you do here the variable that controls the loop and then you have the actual condition here in the middle and then finally you can do something to the control variable so you sort of do all those things at once. So this is a very good loop to use when you know that you want to do something a predetermined amount of times. Uh, and you can also use the control variable within the loop, uh, which can be a nice thing. So if I start with just executing this, you're going to see that what I do is printing control. Okay, so let's just go through the statement here. What we do is that we, um, we begin with defining or declaring the control variable. My dollar control equals five. Then we have our condition, which is as long as control is bigger than zero. 
So this loop or this condition will be true as long as control is less than zero. And then I have dollar control minus minus, which means that we're going to decrease control with one. And then we print control. So essentially, this will be run entirely before we get into here. So now we should have a print saying four, three, two, one. Okay, actually it doesn't, so it begins it, it begins printing on five. Uh, but you see the en get you get the general picture. So this is very useful when you need to do something a predetermined amount of time. So in uh, so in this case, I'm saying that whatever is in here will be executed five times, and I do that by declaring a variable. Then I have my condition, and then I do something to the control variable. Uh, something that I also want to show you is the difference between local and global variables. So what you call a global variable, that's a variable that you can use within your entire program. Uh, so what I declare up here are variables that I declared, uh, declare sort of in, in my main program, if you will, or I declare it in the default. Uh, default data structure uh, and what we do when we do a loop like this with the curly brackets is that we create a new uh, a new data set or a new code block and if I declare a variable within a code block like so then it's going to be local to that code block so I just want to show you what happens here if I want to print dollar control outside of that code block save uh, yep so now we're going to get an execution error because it says global simple control requires la 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 and that is because uh, the control variable doesn't exist without without of uh, this code block so it's a local variable and it's local to this for loop just as in, in the example with the for each loop here the dollar underscore is going to be local for that for each code block uh, so that's a short one on global and local variables, and it's something to just make sure that you you are in control of, um, so you don't uh, do just a bunch. I mean, if I'm going to modify or if I'm going to uh, declare the control variable out here, and then I'm going to do something to it right here, which I do, and then I'm then I can use it again, but then I won't be in full control of what its value is. So you should be in control of your variables and know if they're local or global. Uh, so that was a short introduction on the four different types of loops that are commonly used within Perl. And we also had a short discussion on global and local variables. And when we get back, I think that we're going to dig deeper into, uh, into system stuff, how you can utilize system commands uh, from within your program. So that's it. Thank you.